Garrett, why don't you go ahead and lead off? <laughs> okay. Um, then following up on the teleconference yesterday, how beneficial is it for a young player like, let's say, Iverson to see analytics and see player tendencies on film that maybe they didn't get to see in high school and learn how to defend? Yeah, the tendencies were always harping. So, like, for each game, my assistants are, are uh, required to watch the previous six games that they play in detail. And uh, so from that, how many times did he turn right? How many times did he turn left? How many times did he go left? How many times did he go right? How many times does he bounce it? Does he catch and shoot? Does he want to put it up and bounce? All the things. You know, what do they do? So you're trying to give them every edge you can and then concisely give it to them uh, in a very concise way so that, you know, they can remember. So a big part of it is the season gets going as you go from here, you get better and better at being able to take the knowledge, retain the knowledge, and use it to your advantage. So it's huge. Then uh, you start talking about, you know, athletics in general. All the highest level guys are watching tons of film uh, and, and learning from it. And then also the analytics. You know, how, you know like for example, Manic takes 52% of his shots from three. So half his shots are coming three. He's shooting 50, 1.7 in conference. So that's like shooting, you know, 73% plus from two. I mean, all of I mean, you know, you got to, they, they got to hear it all and, and use it. I mean, they were great in the last game. We know Isaiah Joe takes 11 threes per game. He's second in the country in three-pointers made. So you want to have all that knowledge so you really lock in to, you know, what these guys are trying to do that we're playing against. Go ahead, Paul. What, when you watch Oklahoma on film, what, what things kind of grab your attention right off the bat? Uh, that they're very, very good offensively, number one, that they can shoot it. They have both their bigs. Uh, you know, for example, starting with number 21, Doolittle. Uh, he's fourth in the league in scoring, fifth in the league in rebounding, top five in field goal percentage offense. He was the most improved player in the Big 12, as voted by the coaches last season. Uh, just really skilled, uh, shooting over 40% on the year from three. Really odd, he shot over 40% as a freshman, took about five threes his sophomore and junior year, and now he's shooting them again, and, you know, he shoots the ball really well. Very, very good passer. Uh, you know, the enemy is a tall 6'5 point guard, six shots he takes per game, shooting 50% of his shots from three. In the conference now, he's 7 for 15. He's a better shooter than what he's shown on a year, but he's shooting it the way he's capable of now and has a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, the two guard, number 12, is the transfer from, you know, from Wichita State out of Arkansas. So he's a red shirt junior, which is like he's a senior. Uh, very, very skilled. They run a lot of sets through him as a point. He shot 46 plus percent as a sophomore at Wichita State, which led the AAC in conference games from three. So he can really shoot the ball. He's a good passer. Uh, he creates off the dribble. Uh, he's only shooting 25 percent, which is surprising for what a good looking shot he has. We don't want to let him get it going against us. He's very capable. And I saw him in their game at Wichita State when they played there. He shot it great. Uh, you know, he, he's a very, very good shooter and good player. They start uh, a freshman uh, who, who's a good player hard at the one. Or actually, he plays off the ball. He's, he's in a one man's body, but he can shoot it 35% from three. Uh, good player, skilled, tough, big time recruit. And then Manic is really the linchpin there because he's a guy 35 shooting 52% from three, uh, really spaces the floor, quick release, uh, really hard to guard. He had seven threes last Saturday against TCU in the game. He had four or five against Baylor in the game they had a chance to win in a corner three in the last 10 seconds of the game, down one. Uh, you know, they have good players coming off the bench. Hill's a good player coming off the bench. The two bigs that come off. 52 is Amari Stoudemire type body, really active, you know, flying down the middle for dunks. Zero, same thing. I mean, they got good players. And then they have 15, who uh, is a, a JC kid who's shooting the ball when he's four for eight from three in the conference. So, you know, that's their team. They play defense where they were trying to make take jump shots and not allow anything around the basket. So they're taking away the paint to the best of their ability. They'll double sometimes in the post. Uh, they play ball screens different ways. They'll play a 3-2 zone at times. Uh, you know, they got a lot of things. He's a great coach, a Hall of Fame coach. Go to Joel, second row, right. 
when you look at what this might mean from an NCAA tournament resume building standpoint, I think big quad one win. Things. Do you bring that up with the team at all? Do you even have to? Uh, just... I, I, we don't have to. Every game we're playing is critically important to our season, as every game is. And the later you get in the season, it even magnifies it more. Uh, and, you know, we're playing a Power 5 conference team that will be in the NCAA tournament on their home. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be a great opportunity for us against a good team that's very well coached, that's very talented. We'll stay second round, go to Brian. When you look at how Reggie's played these past few weeks, are, are we close to his ceiling here, or do you think there's, there's even more that he can do? Yeah, he's going to keep getting better. I mean, he's a kid. I mean, he isn't even close to his ceiling. Uh, he's going to keep getting way better uh, each and every uh, you know year that he plays, and this season included, as we're growing. Yeah, he, he still has plenty of things that he can continue to prove on and do better. Go ahead, Love. How unique uh, an opportunity is this to step out of conference play late in January and, and go on the road to do so as well? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's an honor to be a part of this series. You know, where you're, you're picked as one of the ten teams in our league that gets to play against – uh, the Big 12, and it's a uh, you know great opportunity for our conference, and it's uh, obviously a great opportunity for us. Any other questions for Coach? Go ahead, Paul. Back on Reggie Perry, obviously last year it seemed like he got off to a slow start. Of course, some of that was being a freshman, getting used to his surroundings. Had a couple games this year where where he he started kind of slow, fitting into his role again. But but like Brian said, the last few weeks he's just taken off and. What have you seen from the start of the season to to this past couple of weeks on him? What areas has he moved the most this year so far? Well, I mean, he can. I, I love when he gets to the foul line, you know, uh, more. And I think he's uh, doing that. I think he's being aggressive. But part of it is our whole team being more patient offensively, recognizing that we're at our best when we play through him and through the post. He's an unbelievably uh, willing passer. Uh, you know, he, he's really, in reality, he's a pass-first guy. That's what he really wants to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's a very, very good passer. So playing through the post uh, and us getting him the ball more and getting more touches. So a big part of it is we're doing a better job scheming to take advantage of a really special talent. You've had games this year where Odura would play a little bit more than Keyshawn and vice versa. Is that just all about matchups? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Ben, and then we'll go to Tyler. <laughs> ben, we kind of touched on it with scheduling, obviously. The next five games, obviously, a lot in front of you guys, whether it's you know, Oklahoma, Florida, Tennessee, Kentucky. I mean, is that is there kind of any added, whatever you want to call it, fervor or excitement with kind of games like that on the horizon? I know you're taking it game by game. It's just game by game. That's all I allow myself. Like, I literally didn't know who we were playing uh, when we came back from LSU. I had no idea who the next game was. I'm not even thinking about that next game. I'm thinking about this game. I literally didn't. I had no idea. I mean, uh, <laughs> I didn't even know who it was. How, how would you assess how much better Nick has gotten from the time he first had that first game in New Mexico State to uh, the last couple games he's been, you know, lots of assists, li limited turnovers, and, you know, he's been pretty efficient for him. Too. He's always been limited on his turnovers. He's always been good at not turning the ball over. And I think, you know, he's really growing into his role of being that floor general and creating for others, it, almost to the detriment that he's not looking for a shot when it's open. So we still have to get him to do that because he's a very good scorer. And, uh, but I'm really proud of the growth he's showing as a point guard, and you can see his potential. You know, speaking of ceilings, he has a you know, great ceiling ahead of him that he can get to uh, as a point. So I'm really you know, excited about how he's playing. And again, he also keys our defense. I mean, he's the guy uh, that's stopping the ball every time, no matter who's pushing it. And that's a huge part of getting your defense set so you're not giving up things in transition. I mean, most NBA teams, for example, rebound one guy on offense. You know, sometimes two. No one rebounds more than two guys in an NBA game because of all the change of possessions and the shot clock. And, you know, for example, uh, Arkansas rebounded two guys. You know his NBA background. They, they got three backets. They got give nothing, and a big part of it is stopping that ball. Anything else for coach? Okay, thanks. Bye.